Who cares about goblins, orcs, zombies, and whatever else a GM might throw at you when you can send bullets straight through their squishy heads? Isn't that right, Bob? It seems a lot of people are very cautious about introducing firearms to role-playing systems for gameplay balance reasons. Uh, if you don't want modern tech in a fantasy setting, that's a different story. That's totally understandable, that's fine. But if you're okay with having some form of tech and are considering to introduce firearms, there's often a little bit of paranoia, I would almost say, about, oh, this might break everything and just make melee weapons not viable anymore. And that seems to be based on the idea that firearms made melee weapons obsolete right away, which really didn't happen all that quickly when you look at history. They've had firearms since the Middle Ages. You know, cannons and crude handheld firearms. It's basically like a miniature cannon barrel on a stick at first, but they've been around for a very long time and they coexisted with melee weapons for even longer. I mean, in the Renaissance, plate armor was beefed up and, and made thicker to withstand gunfire. Plate armor, melee weapons, and firearms coexisted for, for quite a while, and then just melee weapons and firearms coexisted for even longer. If you think of the Napoleonic Wars, you think of muskets, obviously. So gunpowder very much dominated the battlefield, but there were still sabers in use, and obviously bayonets showed that there was still very much a need for melee weapons. You had to be able to convert your musket into an improvised polearm, basically. And even all the way up to the First World War, sabers were still used. Like, sure, at that point, definitely firearms were dominant, but there was more coexistence than people seem to remember. Of course, it also depends on the type of firearm. Now, usually when people think about having firearms alongside melee weapons in fantasy settings, they think, you know, just, just go really far back, you know, like single shot muzzle loaders, that's it. Everything else is too overpowered. Now, personally, when I think rifle, I mean, pre-modern rifle, I'm thinking, lever action. That's kind of the most iconic rifle to my mind, which is a huge step up from muzzle loaders, of course. Now, instead of having to separately load the powder and the ball and prime it externally, now you've got everything in one small package. Powder, bullet, primer, in a case, self-contained cartridge, great. So now you can load a bunch of these into a magazine, tubular magazine in this case, and then it basically just depends on your manual speed. How fast can you rack the action? And some people, experienced cowboy action shooters with slicked up rifles can pretty much fire at a semi-auto rate. But even then with a firearm like this, Depending on the caliber and the length of the barrel and thereby the magazine, you're, you typically have between like seven and 14 rounds, which at the time was a lot of firepower. By current standards, uh, not so great. So that means after you've fired, however many you've got, now you have to grab your ammo and one by one feed the cartridges into the loading gate or like in this case feed them into the tube directly like this which is a bit faster but either way that takes a while and during that time you're vulnerable and can be attacked with melee weapons or magic or skeletons or whatever and that's the other point in a world where you may face various undead iron golems, which are essentially walking armor, dragons, <laughs> magic of all kinds, how overpowered could this possibly be? Is this really that big of a deal? There are some hard hitting melee weapons in D&D, you know, great swords and all kinds of things, particularly the ones that scale with strength can go pretty crazy. And the game is also designed such that characters are able to take a lot of that. And you know, like a barbarian can tank an axe hit to the chest 
without armor, right? Try that in real life. In fact, I would, I would rather get shot by this once than take an axe to the chest because I might survive this. I'm not gonna survive the axe. I mean, this in particular is a 357 Magnum. If we're talking 4570, that's getting a little bit rough. That should hurt even a dragon. But you can tweak all that, you know, depending on what calibers you're dealing with. Particularly if you think about original lever actions from the time. They were chambered in 4440, which was a revolver cartridge. So that's not crazy, ridiculously powerful. Is that really overpowered compared to magic missiles and <laughs> gigantic hammers swung by ogres and, and all this crazy stuff? I don't think so, not really. In a world where you have enchanted armor and magic shields and natural resistances and super tough skin and etc. etc. It doesn't seem like all that big of a deal. And, of course, you already have ranged weapons. The problem in terms of balance is always ranged versus melee. Like, how do melee fighters get close enough without dying to the, this onslaught from a distance in the first place? So, and, and this has always been a problem. I mean, even in history, on the battlefield, bows and crossbows have always been unfair. You know, just like guns. They're not supposed to give you a fair chance. That's kind of the point. And particularly powerful bows and crossbows will also penetrate armor, at least at certain distances. So what's really the big problem? Um, skill is also another concern, you know. Uh, back in history, of course, the nobles were not terribly fond of the idea that now a commoner could take down a knight with the spoonstick uh, without too much training. But if you think about it, if you want to carry a, a rifle as, a, as an adventurer or, you know, wh whatever you would call that class, gunslinger or, or whatever, uh, you, you would have to spend quite a bit of time uh, training in that world to really be proficient with them. You would have to have a pretty good aim because it's one thing to be on the battlefield on an open field where this huge mass of bodies approaches slowly from the distance we're like yeah you, you aim in the general direction and you're gonna hit something that's one thing but a rogue dashing at you from across the street you go oh crap th this is a different story right so you would have to be quite skilled and would, it would take significant amount of training to be effective in a fight in these various scenarios in a fantasy world with a firearm. It wouldn't be this cheat code of waltzing in there with a gun to kick ass and chew bubble gum and then you find out you're all out of gum. It would be a little bit more difficult considering all the things that people have available, all the powers and artifacts and this and that, suddenly this is not quite so special anymore necessarily. When the mage can blast you with fire from across the room or can summon a bone dragon or whatever, then okay, uh, this is still cool, this is still useful, but it doesn't seem super crazy OP, right? What I've seen is that people tend to go overboard with nerfing firearms to the point where they become not really viable beyond an edgelord gimmick, basically. Oh, I'm so cool, I'm the only one with a gun. It's kind of shit compared to everybody's swords and battle axes and magic spells and everything, but uh, I'm so unique. For example, the pepper box I've talked about in another video is nerfed partially by being unreliable because it's like a, a weird prototype and uh, there isn't, isn't much else around like it and um, I don't really think that's even necessary. You could have, for example, a single action revolver, which is limited in power compared to rifle calibers. And I mean, actual rifle cal calibers rather than a carbine using pistol calibers. Uh, so it's not crazy powerful. Uh, and you have six shots, and then it's gonna take you quite a while to reload because you have to open up the loading gate, turn the cylinder and eject each 
spin case one by one times six and then you have to insert each new cartridge one by one that's gonna take what until the fight is over pretty much you could probably use this revolver once or twice during a fight maybe three times if the fight is particularly long or depending on how skilled you are at quick reloading so you you're gonna have to skip a few turns it seems or you have to carry more than one revolver. With a single shot muzzle loader, it's even worse. Instead of having six attacks for the entire fight, you have one. So that thing better be hella overpowered. <laughs> it's gonna be this one shot that you can take that tears through a dragon's gallbladder in one go. And then you, you gotta just drop it and use a melee weapon or put a bayonet on because it's just gonna take too long. What could make them overpowered would be picking off enemies from a safe distance, which you can do with a bow or a crossbow as well. So there is already that issue, which is solved with uh, balancing and the rules. And when it comes to ammo, it's also limited. Just like mana, you're gonna run out eventually. And there, there are certain limits as to how much you can carry. I mean, this right here, this is a 50 round box of 357 Magnum. And just this one box weighs almost as much as this entire sword. To be fair, it's got ups and downs because this box of 50 rounds is a lot more convenient to carry than 50 arrows or 50 crossbow bolts. So I think the main problem is not so much balancing firearms against melee weapons, but rather balancing firearms against other ranged weapons. Because if you can have one of these, why would you bother with a bow or a crossbow, right? So that's the main problem. Other ranged weapons need to be able to compete with this. So in that case, you can always come up with things like magic repeating crossbows or whatever. And I say magic because in the real world, repeating crossbows are perfectly doable, but rather weak. And if that seems too much, there are plenty of other breech-loading firearms with a limited rate of fire that would make perfect sense, like the good old boomstick, a double-barrel shotgun. So you can fire two shells and then you have to reload. If you have ejectors, you don't have to pull them out, but if you don't, if you only have e extractors, you have to open it up, pull them out, grab the next two shells, put them in, close it up, and ready to go. It's not slow, especially when you're well trained. Once again, cowboy action shooting has some really impressive examples, but it's still a limited fire rate because um, archers can be really quite fast too with plenty of training. Really at that point, the question is, how do you make crossbows competitive? Because they're really heavily underperformed in terms of speed. So at that point, in order to balance things, you would have to make crossbows more powerful than firearms to make up for the slow reload, which of course doesn't make any sense. So I can totally understand why you wouldn't want to deal with all the rebalancing. There are of course other balancing factors as well. Like for example, a crossbow can be operated by somebody who doesn't need to have trained as much as a longbowman. You know, the, the, the sorts of draw weights that you're dealing with, like 140 pounds or, or even more, that takes considerable training for quite a while, which a crossbow doesn't require because it, be, it comes with a, you know, some kind of spanning aid, you know, be it a goat's foot lever or a windlass or something like that. Uh, so there are other things to consider and also cost and, and accuracy, et cetera, et cetera. But overall, I think you really don't have to be all that paranoid about guns ruining everything because there are already plenty of imbalances that are being kind of swept under the rug and you know realism being ignored you know as i said like tanking melee weapons a bunch of hits and being fine if you can do that then you can take a couple of shots from one of these too so anyway i hope you found this interesting thanks for watching and have a good one folks